Hi thinkers, I am very excited to announce a new course on this channel today. So this course is actually object oriented design, a very interesting course and I think uh, that this course is really going to help a lot of people and basically the, the main reason why I am creating this course is because uh, I was actually trying to uh, give some coding interviews and in those interviews I was asked some questions related to object oriented design. So I have studied and gone through the whole uh, subject and I think that I am uh, I have the good knowledge to uh, and lot of knowledge to share with you guys related to this subject. So first of all in this video I am going to uh, show you how uh, what is the roadmap of uh, object oriented design that's an important thing. And you know that whenever I create a roadmap of uh, any particular course I will actually follow that roadmap and all the videos will follow that roadmap. And the course uh, will come on our YouTube channel, website and our Android application for free uh, on all, all across our platforms. So uh, the first important thing you might ask is what is object oriented design? Now uh, for those programmers who have studied uh, a programming language such as Java or C++ uh, or Python, if you have studied object oriented programming, uh, it actually deals with it. Now we are going to also understand in this video why and how uh, this object oriented design is actually applied in big industries and big tech companies like Amazon, Google and um, other places. So let's start with the basic introduction of this course. So what is object oriented design? So, so object oriented design are basically some, it consists of two things which is principles and the patterns, right? So principles actually guide and they are a way to guide you and provide you guidance on how you are going to use uh, these OOPS concepts. So you, uh, if you are familiar with uh, object oriented programming uh, such as Java, C++, you might be familiar with these concepts like data abstraction, polymorphism, uh, encapsulation and inheritance. So uh, if you are not familiar with or if you want to revise it, I will give the uh, link to the video uh, where I have explained the OOPS concept in detail. Uh, you can find that in the description of this video. Now these concepts are very important OOPS concepts. So what's the big deal with these concepts? Like why are we actually, uh, what are we actually trying to learn from these concepts is that uh, let's go back to like let's say 10 years or 15 years back. So when the object oriented programming first come into picture, when it first came into picture the first thing was the a lot of tech companies were using object oriented uh, programming and the concepts like encapsulation, data abstraction, polymorphism, it was used extensively across the industry. Now those programmers when they were uh, writing the codes and all they were creating the code base they faced a lot of problems. They faced problems related to maintainability. They faced problems related to code reusability. They faced a lot of problems related to extensibility of the code. Extensibility means that uh, you are actually going to uh, write a software and the client now says that you know what I want some more features in this code base. So uh, he asked for a new feature so uh, if you have written a particular code base uh, how much is that open for modification, right? Uh, how much easy it is for you to, as a developer, to implement that feature? Uh, how many lines of code you need to change and how uh, the whole flow will be, uh, how much time will it take to do that, right? So when these concepts were used by a lot of programmers in back days, uh, they faced a lot of problems like um, they were unnecessarily creating uh, objects and they were uh, relied on inheritance and inheritance is also uh, has some drawbacks. So uh, which we will cover in this object oriented design. So object oriented design is actually uh, uh, you can say it is an art of software development. So you might know that software development is about creating a software but when you come to a big industry, big tech companies and even uh, small startups you will see this often that the code that they want to write they want it to be maintainable code. Uh, reusability of code should be there. You should not write unnecessarily junk code. So the thing is how are you going to create a software right as an entry level software developer if you want a job at a such tech company you must be having some knowledge of certain principles and certain experiences of the programmers who have faced problems related to these concepts or usage of these OOPS concepts can actually be terrible if you don't use it wisely. So there are some developers uh, namely there are four developers who created uh, these 23 design patterns in object oriented programming and they are known as 23 gang of four. So gang of four means they are four developers. They were from uh, big tech companies like IBM and all that. So they have uh, actually worked a lot on big projects. And uh, since they have worked on big projects, they have generalized a lot of problems that they have faced in uh, these patterns. So you can use these patterns, which actually makes use of these OOPS concepts. So the whole crux of object oriented design lies within these four concepts, which is uh, data abstraction, polymorphism, encapsulation and inheritance. Now 
this is the step one. The step one is to of this roadmap is to actually cover Oops concept. You can cover that in just one hour. I have given. I will give the link of that video. The second step is to understand solid principles. Now I have already told you that object oriented design consists of two things: the principles and the patterns, right? So first, uh, in the next video, we are going to start with the solid principles. These principles will guide you on how you should use and when you should use a particular Oops programming concept. And you will understand how, uh, you, how, uh, in what cases you should use encapsulation, right? For example, uh, let me give you a simple example to give you an idea. Let's say you have written a code, and a part of a code is actually varying, right? So it varies by, let's say, every time a new class is being created or in a new interface is being added. Um, by that part, you can encapsulate it, right? Now, all these techniques you're going to learn in solid principles and patterns also. So there are very crucial and uh, interesting things. And once you have these principles and patterns, you basically have a guidance on how to do software development in a better way. And it is basically an art. So it is not like fixed, like you should know these principles as a baseline, but you can come up with your own principles. You can come up with your own patterns. So these are, uh, these are just basic guidelines, right? So we'll study these five principles in solid principles. So solid this is not basically the solid that we know of. It is actually a, a, an acronym for S-O-L-I-D. So the first principle is the single responsibility principle. Then we have open, closed, list of substitution, interface segregation, then dependency inversion. We are going to cover these five principles in the next upcoming videos. And then we are going to cover these design patterns, 23 gang of four. So there are 23 patterns that we are going to discuss, right? 23 patterns, which was created by a gang of four people, four developers who uh, took their experience and they designed it into a pattern. So what basically a pattern is? A pattern is basically it is a generalized form of some problem solving, right? So if you uh, face a problem, you make a pattern and uh, that problem is occurring a lot of times in the code base. So they have uh, given some uh, patterns, right? So they are basically divided into three. The first one is the creational patterns. Creational patterns deal with creating objects, right? Uh, since we know that in object oriented programming, we actually create objects. So you will see how uh, creating objects by using the new operator uh, how you should do that optimally, right? How you should do that in a, a good way. So using the new operator is also a very important thing. You should give the responsibility of creating objects. And there are a bunch of things that we're going to study on the creational patterns related to how an object should be created, right? So the I've written some patterns here. There are a lot of patterns, the factory pattern, prototype builder pattern, abstract factory method, and they, there are four or five um, in creational patterns. Then we have structural patterns. Now the structural patterns actually shows how you should structure a class. So under different, different circumstances, you will see which structure will actually help you in, uh, in dealing with a particular situation when you are doing software development. Then we have uh, adapter pattern under the structural pattern, a very important pattern, and it is asked in a lot of coding interviews. Then we have composite pattern, and then we have a lot of other bunch of patterns. Similarly, we have behavioral patterns. Behavioral basically means how the objects and classes are going to uh, behave with each other. How are they going to interact with each other? So uh, we will have observer, which is a subscriber publisher uh, scheme. And we have then state, which is going to understand the state of particular objects. And uh, there are a bunch of things that we're going to study. And it is these are very important concepts that you're going to study in this course. And this course will be available for free on this channel. So make sure to subscribe our channel and support us by sharing these videos with your uh, other students so that we can also grow and you can also make a difference by uh, actually expanding this uh, knowledge base of yours. So uh, that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.